Do I have to wear this? No. Okay. I know you guys are watching these videos to learn about how scientists at MA Performance engineer things, but let me tell you what an actual engineer at this company wears. It's this. My name is Alex Nelson. I work for MA Performance as a mechanical design engineer here, and uh, I focus on using simulations and CAD to design our intakes and some of our exhaust products uh, and sometimes our cosmetic products. Today I'll be talking about intakes and what makes our intakes special and uh, what we do to develop them and optimize them. It might just look like a relatively simple part with a filter on the end, but there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes to optimize the packaging, the performance, and the user experience of these products. So I figured I'd walk you through the steps on how we design them and uh, show you one of our projects that we've been working on pretty hard for a few months. So when we first bring in a car to design an intake for it, the first thing I look at is the engine bay. I'll go out, pop the hood, look at the engine bay and see where's the easiest place to work on, where are the OEM bolt hole locations, where's the wiring going, where's the plumbing. There's a lot of things that we won't necessarily see in CAD or even from a 3D scan that you really have to get out there and look at the car and determine how you're gonna make this intake. Oftentimes, I'll even ask Kyle Larkin, uh, our resident technician, how he thinks something should be installed. Oftentimes, it's the people who work on the cars the most that have the best engineering mindset on how to design something for ease of install um, and ease of removal. So first, I'll start with the engine bay, and then we'll go from that to sketches. So once I have the sketches drawn up or I've made a mock-up in Photoshop, which I'll do sometimes, then we'll start working on the prototype design. So it starts with hard points. Hard points in the automotive design industry are typically things like suspension towers, um, a windshield frame, stuff you can't move. I use it to just describe things that are very difficult to um, just make a fix or a bracket for, things that need to fit perfectly as the OEM did. So for example, on the STI, there's this front snorkel geometry here that has this cutout for a bracket, or there's this notch right here, which is for a coolant line, or right here, there's a headlight uh, housing. So those are the hard points that I have to accommodate for, um, and those I'll draw up uh, as the first order of business when designing an intake. Then I'll take the CAD model we have of our seven inch air filter, which has a large opening for the velocity stack we use on basically every single intake. Um, and I'll place that filter in the engine bay in CAD where I think that it's accessible and has clean air and is generally a reasonable place to put it. Sometimes I'll even go out to the car with a filter and try to see if I can fit it in places down in the bumper, you know, so that I can get colder air or get it further away from the engine and the ambient heat uh, in the engine bay. We'll move on from that to me spending 10 or 20 or 30 hours in CAD to make a functional prototype that we can then 3D print. <laughs> So after about 10 to 20 or 30 hours of sitting in CAD and drawing up something that I think looks good and places the filter in a reasonable spot, we'll just 3D print it. We'll just say, okay, this is a checkpoint. We're gonna 3D print this just to see if it even remotely fits um, and if it's even remotely a reasonable idea to put something that's totally different in form factor to the original OEM intake into this engine bay. Usually I will get fairly lucky and it'll fit no problem. Sometimes there will be a hose or a bracket that I didn't catch in the 3D scan and it'll hit either like the bottom of the intake or somewhere that's not obvious. And then we break out the air tools. I don't know if there's a clip of me hacking apart all of my prints, but we get pretty dirty with the air tools. We'll cut holes and stuff. We'll make the air box fit and then I'll bring that back and record those changes and we'll update it as we see fit. Once that's done, it's time to basically iterate and iterate and optimize this fitment until it fits perfectly in the car with the 3D printed part. I even took the time to make a cubic meter size 3D printer to print these parts in one piece so that they fit perfectly per my design. And we know that we can sign off on them for production without having to worry about the deviation in uh, glued together parts. This one is a little bit older, so it has some tape lines and some scars and marks, but uh, that's how we do things right now. So once we know everything fits properly and it doesn't run into any hoses, you don't have to cut it in half to install it. Once we know that all works fine, we'll then move on to optimizing horsepower. We start out with a pretty good set of fundamentals. So we have a huge air filter. Everything's oriented nicely in the engine bay. It's all usually breathing through the front bumper and the OEM intake snorkel on the car as long as we have access to it. 
So we're, we're set up to make good power, but there are little things that can make a huge difference, such as math housings. So I will usually sit down for probably about a week in CFD and optimize how air is flowing through a pipe in simulations. So for example, with this one, I ended up actually 3D printing probably about 25 to 30 different iterations of this math uh, housing right here that we were trying and taking off and switching out, just trying to get the best possible math reading the lowest possible fuel trim corrections, as well as um, the best horsepower. And once we're done optimizing horsepower, then we move on to this guy. This is the production prototype of this intake design. As you can see, it's now a metal math housing, which is great for road testing. It's also a rotationally molded air box, which if you are not familiar with rotational molding, just give it a YouTube search. It's fascinating. I would highly recommend checking it out. And this is great for road testing because it's uh, not gonna have any issues with heat like the 3D printed ones do. Um, it's much more resilient and oftentimes we'll end up bringing our prototypes to track days, to uh, burnout contests, to drag racing strips. I mean, we'll do everything with our prototypes that we can when it comes to road testing. Sometimes we'll even, if Tyler can throw me this prototype. <laughs> Sometimes we'll even combine 3D printed carbon fiber nylon parts with production sample rotationally molded parts. Um, this is a product that, I don't know if I can tell them about this yet. This is a product that is gonna be sweet. This is a carbon fiber 3D printed math housing that we use to verify that this design flows properly. You can even see that there's a little bit of CFD um, flow optimization going on here where I made this pipe not entirely circular. So, you wanna catch this? Oh God. Yeah, once the road testing is done, then you'll end up seeing a product like this um, on maperformance.com. And oftentimes people who buy them will leave reviews reflecting exactly what we saw in, uh, in our engineering and testing. So, for example, the uh, WRX Airbox, if you wanna throw me that, oh boy. <laughs> The uh, WRX Airbox in uh, testing, we found that this lowered intake air temperatures by a ton, especially at wide open throttle. And that's exactly what people who bought the product saw. So it's really satisfying to do this work because we'll end up engineering things and testing them in very similar ways or identical ways to the way that you guys use them. And that's always our goal. So um, everything that we're engineering here is reflected um, in the product's final outcome. So that's how we design intakes here at MA Performance. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to our sales team. Um, they're always happy to answer questions about any of our products that we design here or carry at maperformance.com. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, yeah, I look forward to reading comments and I'll try to answer them the best I can if there's any questions about the specifics of what systems and uh, what all goes into designing these. Thanks for watching.